Welcome back. Earlier today, in between floor interruptions from lady protesters, Donald Trump outlined his economic policy plan in Detroit. So what did he get right and what did he get wrong? There's no better person to ask than Jonathan Honig, <laughs> founding member of the Capitalist Pig Hedge Fund and a Fox News contributor. Welcome back, Jonathan. Thank you. Great to be with you, Lisa. Uh, thank you very much. I'll tell you what I liked about the, the speech. Um, I liked that he talked about ending the death tax and the moratorium on regulations. What did you like? What yeah. did you dislike? Yeah. But it was kind of pedestrian, wasn't it, Kennedy, a little bit? I mean, for, for someone who has held himself out as such a revolutionary, such not a politician, th this just seemed not radical at all. I mean, something as basic as a flat tax, which some of his other com competitors in the primary, there was nothing to be found. I mean, the thing that stuck out to me is, unfortunately, how anti-free markets, how anti-capitalist, I believe, Donald Trump is. Yeah. He used a lot of the same language, Kennedy, as the Democrats. Rich pay their fair share, tax cuts for the middle class, and for everyone who has the least. So this is surprisingly lame in my opinion. Yeah, no, uh, I, I agree with you there. And I think it's very problematic when you could take quotes from Donald Trump's speech, Bernie Sanders' speeches, and something from Hillary Clinton, and they could all sound essentially the same uh, when right. they talk about things like trade and infrastructure spending. Now, let's talk about trade a little bit because I was on Outnumbered today, and, and you know, I said that he is essentially an anti free trade person, and yes. those who defend Donald Trump say, no, he's right on because we have to start talking about fair trade. Who has it right? Yep. Well, you know, Kennedy, uh, Trump, as you pointed out, is explicitly anti-trade, and that means he's anti-freedom. I mean, trade is how you act, as free people act, rational people act in a free world. So Trump sees trade as win-lose. I mean, he's referred to trade as rape before. Yeah. It's America versus the world in his eyes, and all we need is America, that is Donald Trump, to make a better deal. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of what trade is. Yeah. And basic economics. I mean, you know, you talk about uh, everyone having their ability to make a pie versus uh, having one pie and smaller and yeah. smaller pieces to go around. You know, that's. I agree that trade is not a zero-sum game, and it will ultimately hurt this country if you, through coercion and force, make American companies only make things in this country with American materials. That hurts us all. Right. It's not just bad economics, Kennedy, if I can build on what you said. It's, it's also bad morally. I mean, Donald Trump didn't make the moral case of why these plans are right. So he talks about it from a really pragmatic, kind of practical view. Squeeze this lever, move this letter, and we'll bring back jobs. He doesn't really make the, make, make the case that you have a right to your money, yeah. that you, you do, did earn that. And then if you want to buy a TV set or a car from someone in Japan, you have every right to. You don't have this service to the greater good, service to the collective. That's what Trump's all about. Are you for TPP? Are you down with TPP? Yeah, you know me. I do know you. I do know you, and you know I, I know there are people who say that it is an imperfect deal, but uh, you know opening up trade is is certainly better than walling us off in splendid isolation. Yeah, I mean, if you're free people, the policy should be free trade. Of course, Kennedy, for you know, for those we're at war with, uh, there shouldn't be free trade. That's another story altogether. Mm -hmm. But Trump's no suggestion that all that's separating us from national prosperity are higher taxes on the wealthy. Which, in fact, he's already bumped his rate from 25 percent to 33 yeah. percent, but also control of the economy. I mean, tariffs, Kennedy. It's it's not just regulation; it's nationalization, yeah. and that's what I really fear with Trump. Of course, you know, uh, Hillary's on the left, but Trump. I wish he was a real free market alternative. He's not. No, I, I think that neither of these presidential candidates are. And uh, that's why you have a lot of independents, Republicans, and some liberty leaning yeah. Democrats going, hmm, yeah. who is that Gary and we, and Johnson have, you talk so much about? Yeah, and we have education to do, Kennedy, to kind of help people understand that trade is good, that trade is productive, yeah. and that the less the government has to do with the economy, including calling up CEOs and threatening them, as Donald Trump has alluded to, force is the antithesis of wealth creation. And that's what Teddy Roosevelt did, and you could argue that that was not a good idea. Jonathan Honan, thank you so much for being here <laughs> always. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you.